Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is monitoring availability with Azure Logic App Standard using Application Insights. Let's go. So in this session I want to talk about a topic that's pretty important and that's around monitoring. And in my experience, like going back to even like the BizTalk days, if you don't have data, you will get blamed. You know, we've all been there where you might be integrating across a series of different systems and a transaction goes missing. There's some sort of an error. Bottom line is the business is left with expectations that haven't been met. And so how do you, you know, ensure that that doesn't happen or at least limit the impact of that happening. And generally what that means is being ahead of the curve as opposed to being behind the curve, being very proactive as opposed to very reactive. And so one thing you can do is use synthetic transactions or heartbeats or just proactive monitoring to go ahead and to reduce the impact of outages. The, with the idea being the sooner you know about the issue, the sooner it can be addressed and hopefully it can be addressed before there is actually a business impact itself. And so in today's session, what I wanna talk about is how we can use the availability feature inside of Application Insights that allows us to go ahead and proactively monitor our endpoints. And so we can check for things like connectivity, response codes, if we're calling an API, dependencies, so maybe you've got web pages and you need to load up specific images, maybe they're coming from another website itself and then content so we whether that's a web page where we want to check to see for the existence of a specific term or content as part of a response so maybe as part of our response payload we're expecting a specific node or attribute we would have the ability to go ahead and perform a contains essentially on that response so that's what we're going to focus on today and one thing I did want to add on to this is that, you know, especially in like my experience with SAP, some systems won't let you create new transactional data as tests, but you can try to sort of reduce the overall impact or coverage by at least being able to do things like reads. So while you may not be necessarily creating the data inside of SAP, Perhaps the ability to just even query data from SAP at least gives you some comfort knowing that SAP is up. Uh, number two, perhaps you're using credentials. It allows you to check to see if the credentials are still good. And this is sort of better than nothing. And I think that's kind of a, a key message when you think about creating your whole monitoring strategy is think of ways to reduce risk. And then as you learn, go ahead and further reduce the risk by taking those learnings and trying to achieve you know, something greater uh, as a result. And then the other thing you can think about is, and there's no harm in doing this. Like I think earlier on in my career, I was always like, oh, is this a good idea? Should we really do this? And as time goes on, I think at the end of the day, just availability for the business just becomes a top priority. So you know, as part of your projects, if you don't have specific endpoints, that you can include in this type of monitoring, go ahead and add that to your project scope. Like go ahead and add a heartbeat endpoint to the system that you're integrating with. And you know, the benefit is that you actually now have this opportunity to go ahead and proactively ping or connect. And uh, the outcome should be improved reliability of the overall system. So that's something to consider, but let's go ahead, let's get more into the details here. Okay, so just to illustrate the scenario or the concept here. So I've got a demo. This is the part of the demo from the Integrate conference. And as part of that scenario, what we needed to do was to expose an API through APIM that would allow us to go ahead and look up specific discounts. And we would do so through a logic app that would connect to SQL. And uh, well, this was also part of a VNet so I guess we're technically testing out Azure networking as well. But the idea is that we want to be able to send requests in and to then look at the result and make sure that we get the HTTP response that we're expecting. And so what this does in essence is allows us to test APIM, it allows us to test Azure Logic Apps, it allows us to test Azure networking, and it allows us to test SQL. So in this case, Azure SQL. So if there was an impact or an outage to 
one or more of these different services, we should be able to get it picked up from Application Insights. And Application Insights will continue to go ahead and send these requests through based upon a configured like timeline. And so we have full control over that. So that's a little bit about the scenario that we're going to go through here today. But first, just a little bit more about Application Insights. So once you've got Application Insights configured, and probably the easiest way to do that is, you know, when you're provisioning your Logic App standard instance. And I should note that this feature, even though I'm using Logic App standard, you can very much use this against any endpoint, really. So this could be against Logic App's consumption. It could also be against Power Automate if you wanted to use this in that model too. So basically any HTTP system, uh, you should be able to use some variant of this. And so what we can do once we've got Application Insights installed and, and configured, we can go ahead and click on the availability option in our left nav. And then once we're in this experience, we can then go ahead and click on add standard test. And I will show this to you in the portal. Um, but just to just briefly explain the concept, what we can do is we can go ahead and configure a test. And in this case, our test is going to go ahead and call a specific endpoint. And in this case, this is hosted inside of API management. And there are some ways to still achieve this if we've got essentially a private endpoint or if we're behind a firewall. There's things you can do with Azure networking and using service tags to still allow for this communication. In my case, this is a, a public endpoint. So we're going to go ahead and call that. Uh, we want to be able to enable retries for availability test failures. So basically, if you've got some transient failures, you know, where there might be just a little bit of a hiccup, do you want to go ahead and try again? Then what we've got is, and this is kind of a, I would call it an optional thing, uh, especially if you're, you know, provisioning your own SSL certs, probably even more important, but uh, this was enabled by default, so I just left it. Uh, so we're just going to valid, make sure that we've got a valid SSL certificate. And then here what we've got is our test frequency. So how frequently are we going to run our test? And then we've got the ability to choose one or more locations in Azure. So these are different Azure region. So perhaps you've got multinational service and you want to ensure that it is your service is basically accessible from a variety of different locations. Then what we get into is more of the standard test info where we can go ahead and configure our HTTP request. Now in my case I'm going to go ahead and send a post message with a specific message body and then once I get into the portal I'll show you essentially how we can validate that response. So let's just flip over to the portal and I'll show that to you. So here is my test inside of the Azure portal. These are those locations. These were the defaults. I just left it. You can choose it based upon your specific scenario. Then I get into my standard test so I can choose the type of HTTP request that I want to make. And then I have the ability to specify a request body. Since I am issuing a post, I'm going to go ahead and include that. Also have the ability to go ahead and set headers. So here naturally I need to include my APIM subscription key. Now in terms of dealing with the response, I, in this case, I'm going to be looking for an HTTP response code of 200. I can go ahead and include content matches. I can choose whether or not I want to ignore the case. And then in this case, what I am looking for or expecting is a discount value attribute to be part of my response. And so that's just sort of an additional sort of layer of validation. Now, in general, maybe I'm just happy with having a 200 response. So kind of mileage may vary, but bottom line is you've got some options. And then lastly, we've got this ability to go ahead and enable an alert. So let's go ahead and we'll close that out and then I'll flip back to the slides. So when it comes to alerts, this gets pretty interesting too. So once you go ahead and create your test, you're going to see it here showing up in the availability test area as it starts to run. And I'll show you that in a little bit. We're going to see more telemetry here, but we can go ahead and click on the ellipsis and then click on open rules alert page. And when we do so, what we're going to see is a default rule that is going to be looking for the number of failed locations greater than or equal to two. 
And if so, we can go ahead and submit an alert. Now you can go ahead and change that as needed, or you can completely sort of reconstruct that rule um, however you want. What we're gonna do here is once we've got an alert configured, we have this ability. So this is gonna happen first by default, right? And we can change it if we want to. Then we're gonna go ahead and configure an action group. And when we go ahead and configure an action group, that's where we've got more options in terms of how we want to send out that alert notification. Could be SMS, or do we want to go ahead and call a custom action? Okay, so we are in the availability section still, and we've got our availability test here. Um, as you can see, it is running. I'll come back to this in a little bit. So things are healthy, but we were talking about alerts. So let's click on the ellipsis, open the rules alerts page, this is the default rule that uh, is created for us. Now, I did go ahead and change this uh, a little bit because I wanted to change it to whenever the average failed locations was greater than or equal to one. So that was something that I went ahead and changed. And so this is where I went ahead and changed that. So I'm saying like over a period of 15 minutes, evaluate every one minute and let me know if there is an alert location threshold that is greater than or equal to one. And so that's where we could go ahead and configure this. By default, it was set to two. I was getting a little bit impatient, so I just you know turned it down a little bit. So that's essentially the, the rule itself. Uh, you can go ahead and make changes as you see fit, but that's kind of the default rule that's enabled. Now the next area that's interesting is actions. And so this is where you go ahead and specify like how you wanna deal with an alert. What are you gonna do with it? And so in this particular case, what I've got going on here is um, I'm gonna go ahead and send some emails. Um, so I sent one to my Hotmail account and one to my work account. I can go ahead and configure those values there. If I want to also configure an action, and I think I'll save this for another video, we can go ahead and basically send out an event. You know, and in this case, it could be a Logic app, uh, it could be ITSM if we wanted to go ahead and try to connect with like ServiceNow, uh, but this is some additional automation itself. So that's essentially alerts. Uh, so for now, I'm just using the email subscriptions. Okay, so back in Application Insights, Availability, Here's where we can go ahead and see all of the different locations that are going to go ahead and call that endpoint, make sure that we've got the right response code, and then it's going to report back. And so what I've done here is I had this working, so I had happy path. So all of these green dots earlier, and so that meant things were good. And then what I did here was I did stop the, basically the transactions, or I stopped the logic app uh, for a period of time. And then here what was happening was we started to get all of these different errors. And then what I did is I turned the logic, bat, logic app instance back on, and then things were basically successful once again. So if we take a look at our alerts, what we can see is that we did have an alert that fired previously. It's since been resolved and it has since been closed. Now we can go ahead and take a look at the history itself here. So we can see at two o'clock we had an alert fired. And then what I was able to do is after I went ahead and started the logic app, I then went ahead and you know called the event closed. And then as our alerts, basically our, our process was basically healthy once again, the monitor automatically changed the condition to resolve. And then what happened was I had basically an email notification that was sent indicating that my alert was resolved. And so that looks something like this, where I can go ahead and see that uh, the alert was resolved and, and life is good. So let's, what we'll do now is go ahead and stop the logic app once again and then I'll show you what happens when we actually have the event fire itself. So here is my Logic App instance. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. 
And then what we should see is that our availability monitor should start to turn from green to red and we should see another notification sent. So I will pause the recording till this happens and uh, we'll go through it in more details then. Okay, so when we last spoke, we were in healthy shape, but then we had stopped the Logic App instance itself. So if we go ahead now and refresh this, we should start to see some yellow. But basically our availability is decreasing as you can see. And so I have received an email and here we can see that we've got an Azure Monitor alert activated for our specific scenario and that the test discount services has failed at least one location within the last one minute. And so now this would give us the ability to go ahead and view that specific situation so that we can go ahead and remediate it. And so now what we can see is that we do have an alert condition that is fired uh, just happened a couple minutes ago and we would now have the ability to do some level of triage here if we want it right so maybe at this point i'm going to acknowledge it uh, logic apps right so we've got some traceability it's it's not really meant to replace your itsm system but at least you can have some sort of audit trail in terms of what's going on from that perspective and at this point you know we figure out that Logic Apps isn't online and we can go ahead and fix that. So we'll go ahead, we will turn Logic Apps back on and now we'll just uh, pause the recording again and we should see that a, another email notification is sent indicating that you know everything's now resolved and we can go ahead and close this out if we wish. All right, so I've just received the notification indicating that my alert has been resolved. Let's just refresh this. And so it disappears here because we've got this uh, basically filter enabled. So let's get rid of that. Then we can go ahead and refresh. And here we'll look for the second one. At this point, it is considered resolved. The user response has been acknowledged. So now what I can go ahead and do is change the user response and close this out and saying everything is healthy. So that will sort of address that scenario. And then if we look at our email, we can go ahead and see that this alert was. All right, so that concludes another episode on the channel. Hopefully you found that one interesting. Another thing I was thinking about as I was waiting for these alerts to fire was that also, whenever you do like shutdowns and startups, like perhaps you need to do some sort of like maintenance to say your SAP system or other enterprise system and you want to turn it back on and you want to make sure everything is working before everyone gets off the bridge and having these synthetic transactions to allow for that validation of connectivity, especially including the credentials, making sure that the integration user has been unlocked those are all like really good use cases for using this type of approach. It doesn't have to be around, you know, unplanned maintenance. This could also be planned or used in planned maintenance as well. All right. So thanks for checking out this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Likes, comments, subscribes, always welcome. Thanks again. Take care.